Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us back on our career chat series. This month, we're featuring the visual and performing arts. And today we have our guest, Josie Morgan, um, who is a college student at Buffalo University. And she will be um, talking to us about her experience as a um, theater arts student at the Buffalo University. Welcome, Josie, and thank you so much for um, agreeing for this interview. Of course, I'm really excited. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So if you can just tell us about yourself, um, your school, where you're from. Sure. So I'm originally from Northern Virginia, right around the DC area. And I did a lot of theater in high school and middle school even, and it was about, um, like halfway through high school that I had just a wonderful experience in my theater department um, that I decided, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. And now I go to the University of Buffalo in New York. And it's very interesting because while I'm getting a very concentrated degree in musical theater, um, a BFA in musical theater, I'm still going to a very large public university. So I'm making friends from all walks of life while still having a very concentrated um, degree with both, with all three medias of dance, acting, and singing. Oh, so what made you decide, I know you kind of mentioned that you had dealt uh, with theater arts in high school, but what really made you decide to pursue this uh, major of study? Like, did anyone inspire you to um, take theater arts or, um, you know, yeah, actually, um, I had two teachers in high school who, after I had sort of said, I'm going to try this, they really believed in me. Mostly they were like, your work ethic is ready to go. You can try this out. And one was a dance teacher that actually worked within the school. And another was um, an acting teacher. And they both said that even though like I, I was a little down because I wasn't really getting, I wasn't sure if I was ready for to audition for colleges because it's such a different process than the um, regular college application that if you're going into an academic form of study. So I was nervous, but they definitely helped me grow into this person that could audition for lots of different schools. And being on stage, definitely there's an adrenaline rush that you get kind of attached to, but also something that I personally identify with is being a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And I was just, all my life I've heard stories from my family that I've been interested in telling. I grew up reading tons of fantasy books and I loved music growing up. So all of those elements sort of, it's like, how can I combine all of this? And then music and theater together is a good way to do that because I like telling the stories of other people and also putting my own spin on it. That's really great. Um, what, when you had said that, um, what do you call this, that you had that um, inspiration from your teachers, were you active in, um, in the school performances in, you know, like, uh, like say the Glee Club, the orchestra, or like um, what activities were you involved with in high school, during high school? Yeah, um, I was actually involved in my school's drama club. And I was really fortunate to go to a school that had both. And even though it was a public university, we have this thing called the Fairfax Academy series, mm. where students can go to things if they're interested in culinary school, they can take a bus to a different public school and they have a culinary uh, institute. And if they're interested in being a firefighter, they can take a bus for one period of their school uh, day to a different school. And then my school that I went to originally also housed the dance studios and, the, um, and a second stage and a black box. So I was kind of already there and ready to go to try this stuff out. So that was really helpful just Eventually, by the time I got to senior year, I had uh, dance classes in the morning and um, singing classes midday and then acting classes in the afternoon. So I was really lucky to have a school that could make it so flexible for me. Yeah. What are yeah. the different requirements if you apply for a theater arts program? 
Mm -hmm. Um, They definitely vary for each university, but something that I saw that was pretty universal was that they all want someone to have a monologue of some sorts, usually one dramatic monologue or serious uh, spoken piece, and then a comedic monologue of sorts. And if you're auditioning for any kind of musical theater program, they usually want you to have contrasting uh, vocal pieces as well. And then if you're, some schools required you to have a dance call. So having a little bit of experience in dance and just getting ready to say, oh, I have no idea what's going to happen in this room. And they're just going to give me a random combination of steps. I'm going to try my best to do it. Just throwing yourself into that room is really important. But um, some schools that have high amounts of applicants, they have this thing called pre-screens, which require you to record your work ahead of time before you go and actually audition at the regular school. So some of the bigger colleges that do that are like in some major cities like New York City and um, Boston. And I know a couple of Texas universities that do it as well. And the University of Buffalo, one of the things I liked about it is that my audition was in person. And I kind of feel as though I could thrive in an in-person setting. But I think anyone with enough prep and support can succeed on a film version as well. Okay. Okay. So can you describe to us a typical day for you as a student of uh, studying theater arts? Sure. Um, I guess it definitely depends on what year you're in within the program. Um, Freshman year, I definitely started. The coursework was very heavy, front loaded on dance classes and actually technical theater classes because they really want you to be a well-rounded um, artist in that they want you to understand the what's happening behind the scenes. Because if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, who's putting your costumes on, who's doing the lighting, then you're really not going to appreciate it and understand all the time and effort that goes into it. So that was interesting. My freshman year, I wasn't really performing. I was really putting on, um, I was using the spotlight. I was like pressing go on random keys and uh, helping with costuming. And now that I'm a junior and going into senior year, I'm doing more performance heavy classes. Last semester, I had to take a mime class from a teacher who did a Paris mime school. It was- Oh, that must be cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, And he knew a lot of information. Very specific though, very specific elective. And um, with my singing classes, we have, you kind of have one professor that teaches most of them. I get voice lessons every semester that happen once a week. And within those voice lessons, I'm assigned three or four uh, songs a semester. Mm. And they kind of range from classical to Cole Porter in 1920s sort of stuff to current rep of today. So stuff, some people do things from Hamilton and Wicked, and some people are doing things from The Sound of Music. And my program's really good at being well-rounded with that. And then... um, there's productions, and our productions have been virtual these past two years, but um, productions happen, rehearsals are usually in the afternoon and evening. And in between all that, you fit in as many dance classes and other acting electives as you can. That must be really awesome, um, especially the acting part, and also the fact that you're actually learning every um bit in the industry in a sense you know from um the the lighting the backstage like you mentioned when you were in your freshman year you've learned all of this the technical um how should I say it would be more the um the um the technical part that's involved in a production so to speak because you said you learn how to use the backstage lights you know um which button to push in the sound sound effects, I guess, in the sound the 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 sound studio, whatever, um, which is which is good because then you kind of get to know um, more on how you can, um, I guess, when you're doing your acting or singing, how you can actually be the best performer since every you know what's what what entails a whole production. 
Um, so which um which class do you like the best? So like what what do you like the best about um being a student in the program? I definitely like the I love my vo my voice lessons because those are one on one teaching moments where I just kind of get to come in with what I've worked on for the whole week and then my voice teacher will listen to me and see how I was doing and then she's really good at assigning stuff based on my progress and helping us create measurable goals. I also really, really enjoyed my method acting class sophomore year. We did, there, there's several different like American acting methods, but the one that my school focused on is Meisner technique, which is kind of serious and people talk about it a lot in the film industry. Um, and that was a really intense course, but it taught me a lot about myself. So all the courses that I get to learn something new about myself have definitely been my favorite. That's cool. So, what, what do you like the least in the program? Um, I think with every program, I know that in certain science programs, there's definitely sometimes where there's professors that are focusing more on their research rather than mm -hmm. teaching. Mm -hmm. And that ha it's the same thing in theater. Sometimes they have a passion project and they're just pushing it. And you're like, uh, actually, I'm going to go do my own thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't really want to work on or you will work on that as part of your course load. You'll work on a director's project and maybe it's really not your thing. But then I can go do a student directed show and mm -hmm. make my own production or put on a cabaret and kind of fulfill that part of my career. So with every downside, there kind of comes a, well, what can I make out of this? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. So what do you, what personal qualities do you think a person should have if they want to take up theater arts or performing arts as a major of study? Definitely adaptability. Mm. Like we, you hear the stories about like the best of the best people making it on, making it big really fast early on. But for the majority of people, you kind of got to find your way in. And I think I've made the most connections by not taking everything because that's not healthy, <laughs> but taking things that I was like, well, okay, I didn't get into the show this semester, but there's a stage man management position open. And then I get to know a director that semester. And then next year that director casts me because they got to know me a little better. So I guess I would say definitely flexibility and trying new things constantly because you're gonna find different ways to support yourself. And in the end, if you make friends with tech people, if you make friends with different kinds of artists, visual artists, then eventually you can create your own projects in the end of it. That's true. That's the value of networking and developing relationships with people. Mm -hmm. Because in the long run, these are the people that you will need in order to achieve your goals. So that's, that's actually a very good um, strategy, so to speak to yeah. make it work because yes, you're absolutely right. Sometimes you may not get the part that you would so desire for a long time, but then um, you actually um, trying to turn it around and making it positive by figuring out what in what other areas can I use my skills or that I can eventually use my skills. So that's, that is a very good um, a tip or strategy to use and to um, give advice to our high school students who are thinking of majoring in theater arts. Um, so are you currently working while in school? Um, I don't have part time. I don't have really a steady job, but I did end up, I have a position with working backstage um, at the Center for the Arts because within my school, there is an outside theater that like touring productions come in and I get to work backstage and um, 
we, I also get to work, I get paid to work graduations and commencement ceremonies. And I'm the person, you know, wiping down the microphones, making sure everything's COVID safe. So um, with that job, it's pretty flexible because they just send out calls and I can accept them. It's, it's hard to, I have a lot of friends who try to get jobs with this major and it's difficult because you need to find something that's really flexible because your semester course load changes drastically each time. But I do think that there's stuff out there and people have been able to make it work. Well, do you, do you advise students in this particular major of study to work while in school? I think it really depends on the like personal scenario. Because I know a lot of people that really have to work in order to continue to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I think that especially now, given COVID, people are making their programs more adaptable to that. In the past, especially theater, they've been like, you show up on time and you come to all these dates and you there's no excuses whatsoever. And now on my audition forms, they're like, write down when your job is and maybe we can work around it. And that's that's a really positive change for me because I think they've started to realize that financial inequity is a big problem in the theater industry as well. Um, and I, I do enjoy the few jobs I've been able to pick up around campus because like you said before, it's, it's networking in different ways because I'm working in different circles mm -hmm. and it's good to have a little paycheck to help pay for my dance shoes every semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, every, every little thing helps, you know. Um, and I, uh, you know, we because we do have students that need to work, like you said, in order to uh, maybe pay fees or, uh, you know, buy whatever they need, you know, with, with their studies. So um, we usually, um, like, I usually like to ask if it's feasible for students, because um, we do have this freshman coming in and, um, uh, what do you call this? This is their first time entering the world of college and budgeting and paying fees, books, you know, extra curricular expense or extracurricular activities, extra expenses and stuff like that. So um, it's hard. It's definitely difficult, but I mean, I think it's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a matter to, you know, time management too. Like if you, mm -hmm. if you do need to work, then you just, have to manage time wisely, you know, when it comes to your studies and your part-time job. So what yeah. would you, um, what advice can you give to our high school students, to our students who are thinking of pursuing theater arts? I did have, um, I've come across a lot of students who are thinking, um, who are planning to take this major after graduation from high school. Oh, awesome. I would say, there's a lot of things I would say actually, but the big one is, if if someone tells you you can't do it don't listen to them <laughs> and i mean i've definitely had personal instances of teachers saying oh well maybe this is not the right path for you or i don't think you're going to get into musical theater college and then i did so all you do is all you can do is prove people wrong but also at the same time it's okay to um, find a different avenue and to try something new as well, because don't quit anytime because someone else told you, but let yourself say, hey, I need a breather. I don't have to go, go, go all the time. Part of experiencing and making art is also living life. Mm -hmm. So you can overwhelm yourself with coursework, but then you're not going to be getting this experience of oh, my mind is clear. I can be a little creative this time. And another thing I'd say is um, along the lines of the networking thing is when one door closes, another one is always open. Sometimes it's just you have to go searching for it a little bit. And it might not always be where you expect, but every time I haven't gotten cast or didn't get the thing that I wanted, I found something even cooler that I honestly think was waiting for me. And I think that's how the universe works a little bit. Mm -hmm. that's, so how has your educational journey been so far since you 
graduated from high school and entered into the world of theater arts? It's been interesting. I think it, it's been a lot different than I expected it to be, but in a good way. I think I took up, um, it was more free form than I expected it to be. Like, especially this field, you hear, oh, it's such a vigorous course load. You have to do everything just the way the directors say, but that's not always the case. In, and every teacher is different. And I guess what I'm saying is that you got to take from each class what is what serves you. And I thought everything would serve me. And I would if I did everything right and got A's in every class, this is what's going to like, everything's going to be great. But no, sometimes it's the outside opportunities or hanging out with a friend group who creates something different that are really the beneficial parts. So I think allowing myself to go on those ups and downs of this whole educational journey has been the most beneficial for me. And now that I'm a junior going into senior year, I've started to take on some leadership roles and that's been really exciting. So yeah, that's kind of where my journey has begun. That's great. And I did. So, um, so you actually took, so you actually um, just went for the four-year degree straight from high school. You did not um, do an associate of arts and then transfer. Yeah, I went from I finished high school and during my senior year, I was auditioning for four-year programs. Okay. And I knew specifically that the degree I wanted was a bachelor in fine arts, which it varies as the difference between a bachelor in fine arts and a bachelor of arts for mm. each theater department. But typically if you're in a theater department and there is a bachelor of fine arts offered and a bachelor of arts offered, the bachelor of fine arts has more practicum credits and more performance-based courses. So if you're someone that's interested in more of the written side of theater or a more flexible degree than a Bachelor of Arts might be your path. But a Bachelor of Fine Arts is more, if you're pretty certain that this is the path you want to take and you've looked at all their courses and you want to take as many of them as possible, pretty much. So I guess what you're saying is that if you want to take courses that has more of the practicum side of it, and more specific, you would be taking on the bachelor, of the, the fine arts one, as opposed to yeah. the bachelor of arts. Okay, all right, well, that's good to know, because um, I have had students um, who even thinking of just doing um, a transfer to a four-year program, to a four-year program, is even unsure as to which one they're going to go to, whether it's the, the sciences or the bachelor of arts or the fine arts, you know. Mm -hmm. so that's 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 good to know well thank you so much Josie for this abundant wealth of information for our students <laughs> I, I hope mean, it wasn't overwhelming I have a oh, lot of no, information no, it, to no, it was it was perfect because um 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 like you said I have a lot of students who have um had who have plans to go to um theater arts and actually whenever they say that I says oh I because my original dream was to actually take theater arts in college oh amazing but, yes but unfortunately well I guess it would be unfortunately but in the Philippines um and I guess even here they frown up they don't look upon highly on theater arts because there's not money in it you know unless you are absolutely you know that talented or lucky that you land in a part you know and in the Philippines, it's like that. It's very competitive. And my parents wanted me to take the sciences. Mm -hmm. So I had to go towards that path. And um, But I love performing. I love music. And so I guess as a teacher, the classroom has been my stage because I like to, you know, to do all that kind of, little, you can ask your cousin. Um, but um, but yes, and, and thank, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you for sharing with us your um, experience as a theater arts student. 
And I wish you the best of luck in your senior year next, um, what, August? When do you start? August again, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, so enjoy your summer. Have a wonderful Thank summer. You. And um, I hope to see you one day in Broadway. <laughs> let's or hope. Anyway. Let's hope. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you never know. Uh, you know, um, you're very good, I can see, in networking. And then I think that you'll do well. And you never know. So, thank you. Right. Thank you for having me. And if anyone has any questions or you have students that want to reach out, I would be happy to answer more questions about oh, it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I sure will. I will let you know and I'll give them your contact information. Thank you. Okay, have a wonderful weekend. You too. Bye. Okay, bye. -bye. our career chat series and again featuring our career our current career is in the visual and performing arts um we welcome today um karen k tolan uh, a music instructor um in new jersey welcome karen and thank you so much Hello. for um accepting our invitation for this interview we are really excited to hear about what a music instructor does, um, what it entails, your educational journey, and so forth. So first of all, please tell us something about yourself, where, where you're from, um, what school did you go to, et cetera. Okay, so my name is Karen Kavinsky Tolan. So I'm from Somerset, New Jersey. So I'm currently married right now. So in this job, I teach as a private instrumental instructor. So I work at Allegra School of Music in Hillsborough, New Jersey. So for my graduate degree, I did graduate from Montclair State University in 2012 as a music education. So did you, um, did you get an education degree to become a musical um, music instructor? Or I know some people, they take the Bachelor of Fine Arts. So which one did you pursue? So it's more in the arts department. So I'm also part of the music education program. So this is part of being in the arts program at the same time of teaching. Okay, so what was your undergraduate degree, so to speak? Like um, what, what, what did, how, what, yeah, what was your major? Um, like I said, it's musical, it's my major was music education. And so you have a, bachelor's degree in fine arts correct yeah in fine arts yes. oh, but so bachelor of finance okay so that's that's good to know um and you went to school in montclair new jersey so did you um initially um started at a community college or did yes. you go straight to a four-year degree actually i started off at mercer county community college study as music i was trying to save some money on that since four-year college is actually pretty expensive spending about 50 grand per year it's kind of too pricey for my liking okay so, so, you, so you did start at the uh, community college and what classes did you take when you started a community college oh boy this has been a long time so i took some music theory courses music history courses i learned more about the music technology courses um some of the classic courses, like for math, English, just to get this out of the way, biology. So you take your core, so you took your core classes and some music classes at the community college. Yes. And the concentration of your core major subjects will be, was at Montclair State. Right. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about that the entire time. Okay, that's, that's good. So can you please describe to us a typical day for you as a music instructor? Okay, so I always, so depending on my day on this one, normally I start around two o'clock and I try to prep up all my lessons together. So right now I'm starting, I actually work from home for in the past, since the pandemic started in March of 2020. So I'm actually trying to prep all the files together so I have my music books ready to go. Some of them are PDF, so I actually use this for educational purposes. So I show them what exactly they need to work on. And if they made a mistake, they can actually 
correct themselves. How many, and, how many students a day do you teach? Hmm. How many students per day? Yes, hmm. roughly average. I want to say about 10. Okay. About 9 to 10 per day. And do these students um, play different instruments? So do you teach different yes. instruments? Yes. So I teach piano, brass, such as trumpet, trombone. That's the most common instruments right now. Woodwinds. This is mostly from flutes, clarinets, saxophone, and oboe. And I teach string instruments. Okay. So when you, um, because you teach a variety of instruments, did yes. you learn to play these instruments while you were in college? Um, most of them, yes. 50%, no. I actually, I had some prior experience. For example, oh. I had been learned how to play clarinet for about more than 20 plus years. I played clarinet for 20 plus years, saxophone for 20 plus years, and for a little bit of flute, a little bit of flute, so it was every now and then. And oh, then, okay. as for brass instrument, I play a little bit of like a mellophone, just to goof off at first, because my sister used to play mellophone. Oh, okay. So the um, so you teach about an average of ten students a day. Mm -hmm. Do they um their proficiency level? Um, do you have different levels of students in a uh, day? Yeah. So for piano, it's mostly beginner level. So they're just trying to get their feet wet, learning many fundamentals of music, such as learning how to keep the beat, learning how to read, which note is which. And they learn how to be expressive and learning the characteristic of the song. So there's a lot of that all the puzzle pieces put in together. So, and also I want to make it as interesting as possible. If not, <laughs> good luck getting them to be interested. Okay, so most of your beginner levels are um, studying uh, how to play the piano. So you have more your intermediate advanced level playing the wind instruments or the bur um, um, strings? For for more on violin, it's mostly beginners. For brass and woodwind, it can go from beginner level to advanced. So what is it, the, um, what's your favorite, um, what's the best thing that you liked about your job right now? I just love the connection on the students one by one and learning about their personalities every time. So you figure out what they like and also, this will give you be more creative and make it more interesting every time. I just don't want to stick with one thing the entire time. Like, uh, for example, if I use like a piano method book, like a primer book, I say, okay, this is how you learn how to play a song. Like, how to play hot cross buns. Here's how you play. Nah, that's going to be too boring. So I try to do an introduction and then give them variety of songs depending on the student. So you gauge um, the um, the songs that you introduce them to based, uh, you gauge the songs that All the you want to teach on their personality. So yeah, based on personalities and learning about the concepts too. So they can get a good idea how to play it. Oh, that's actually cool. That's really interesting because um, I play the piano myself and I choose the songs that I like to play. I like, I choose because I like, because I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with Korean drama right now. So I choose music that, um, that are original from the original soundtrack for the dramas that I watch. So that kind of motivate me to really play and practice it. So what's the least thing that you like about your job right now? Hmm. Least favorite. Hmm. Sometimes we do have some students who are have poor camera angles and if the parent's not there to su supervise them, it can be a very tough job on this one. That's true because you have been teaching from home since the pandemic mm -hmm. and I gather it will be very challenging to teach them like, you know, the hand positioning, yeah. how to hold their instruments, you know um how to sit up straight because i do remember some of these things when i was learning how to play the piano that you know my body posture has not you know had helped with you know with 
uh, yeah. playing the keys. Yeah. Yeah. There were a few uh, students who were having with camera issues and multiple purpose, like multiple mm. issues. It makes it a lot harder to really teach them and help them correct themselves. I can imagine um, also uh, with technology, with internet service too, you know, yes. if you have students that oh, have yes. internet service, I we would got, imagine. I have a couple of students who have re are really good players, but bad internet. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, um, uh, did you, um, uh, when, uh, what do you call this, when you went to school to study uh, to be a music instructor, did you work um, part time or did you work while you were in school? I did a so in community college. I did work like a part time job at a pharmacy store, so I did work there. But I did have like one to two students doing like experimenting on music lessons privately. Okay, so would you re would you recommend um? our college students um, who are thinking into going to um, performing arts or visual arts to be working while they're in school since you worked and how did that go? Was it, like, so was it challenging? The part time was fair. I will say it's definitely fair, but you do need to make some time. You do need to make time to actually study and do some homework there because it depends on how heavy the mount. Okay, so would you advise uh, um, a, a college student to be working while in school or? Yeah, it can, it does help. But when I, when I go to, when I went to Montclair, it was very difficult, I will say. But it also depends on your ability to work around it. It depends on the person. So I guess it really it's a matter of them, um, uh, doing time management, learning how to manage yeah. the time between their studies and working part-time. Yeah, because I seen um, my other, my old classmates had gone from credits for about 24 to 25 credits per semester. That's a lot and of credits today. Yeah, and we do have a zero credit. It's a pass-fail course. For so, all of your, for all of your- um, One course. For is one actually, course? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, it's definitely time consuming because you have to perform in front of people and you're learning about realities of per like doing performance in front of people and listening. And you're also trying to critique and actually say some good positive things at the same time, what things you may need to work on. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, um, uh, what's the average salary for a music instructor like you? I guess you teach at a private music school and not yes. in a school. It's a private. It's a private music studio. So, in certain in certain areas, it depends on your experience. It it it's all depends on your educational level. Like for example, for like a undergrad degree or a grad degree. So this all depends on it. So it can range, the lowest I've seen on average is about $20 per hour, but the most I have seen is about $35 per hour. Okay. That's for like people who have doctorate degrees or master's degrees. Okay. So um, are you an hourly uh, employee? Yes. Our, hourly paid? Okay. So you're not, oh, so they're not salary paid. So what, no. what would be the difference though um, with um, somebody like you teaching at a private music school, as opposed to somebody who's teaching uh, music in, uh, in, in a public school district or a um, For a public school, you are granted to actually have students, but when you're working like at a private, it all depends on how many students you have. Oh, okay. It, so it but does, when, it's just all depends on it. But what, um, what I want um, to know too, uh, for the sake of our students that we will be watching um, this recording is that what would be the difference in the kind of undergraduate degree that I will take if let's say I I want to teach in a classroom, in a, in a school classroom, 
would I go for a bachelor in fine arts or would I go for my bachelor in education with a concentration in music? So, like I said, it's more, if you're in the music school, you have to audition and then you have to do a teacher education degree. So you have to do it both ways. Okay, I see what you're it's, saying. It's definitely both ways here. You got to be able to have music and gold knowledge and performance knowledge, some performance knowledge. So would you say that the music teacher in a public school or in our school um, would just have a, say, a, um, an education degree per se with a minor in music as opposed to a someone that, like you did, you went to school where you learn how to perform and to play? Mm -hmm. So let me see. Well, if we're doing like education with minor, you could take like a might be doing a class or two, but I'm not 100% sure. How would that work? So what made you decide to um, choose the fine arts, the bachelor in fine arts in music, as opposed to just taking your education um, undergrad? I rather because I like the performance section I just find it more enjoyable than just going into a teacher degree. I see. It's not just like it's more about teaching. I just want to enjoy it. It's more like a therapeutic. It's like more therapy for me. Okay. It's more, it relaxes my mind every single time. Okay. I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is like there is more of the performance aspect with a fine arts degree as opposed to taking an education Basically, the, with the educate, if you're going for bachelor's um, in education, you are more like learning how to teach as opposed to learning how to perform. It's both ways. Okay. So it because when I want to teach my students, I want it's not just learning how to play the note or how to play the instrument. It's learning how to perform too, and learning how to practice too, so they can become better than ever. Okay, I see. So um. This your um to be a private music instructor. Do you also get benefits just like any other um um say employee on a job? Not every school, not not every private music studios have that. I was lucky enough to do like a retirement fund, but the studio itself is trying to planning on building up a health benefits in this one oh, eventually. Okay. So there are some, but it's very rare to get like health benefits here for music studios. Okay, I see. I, in this so state, I, I only saw like one, only one studio that does the health benefits. I get it. Well, what about uh, say vacation or day off or sick day? Mm, this one, you don't, you might you end up doing a makeup lesson. You can choose to do a makeup lesson or you can ask someone to be a substitute for the day. Okay, but do you get paid if you say you get sick or you want to take a vacation mm, day? No. Okay, so if you don't no. work, you don't get paid. I see. No. This is so, not like, that's not an easy situation. Like <laughs> so Even, um, what personal qualities do you think a music instructor should have with when it comes to teaching uh, in a private school? They got to be creative. They got to be very patient. Be able to be good around with kids and people with all ages. Um, you got to keep your mind open, just not just one section like you only know classical music. You want to make sure you broaden your horizon with all different types of music genre and different cu cultures here too. Okay. So, but yeah. And also, you want to be openly friendly, but at the same time, stern. It's actually the right balance. If you go too soft, they take advantage. If you do ho too hard or make it too difficult, they throw papers like that. Oh, okay. So it's just like, you know, a, a right teacher in a classroom. Um, so what advice would you give a high school student who is thinking of taking, um, say, the performing arts, who wants to go to school of performing arts, or um, be a music instructor. What advice would you give them? Let's say they're a junior in high school and they're already thinking of this career. 
um, what do they need to do to prepare for a career like yours? They need to be able to perform. So the only thing is they need to have experience, make sure they are on a high level of their musicianship on that. That is step number one. Step number two, make sure, um, step number two, you want to make sure you have your some sort of leadership, whether you're doing big groups or one by one. But for me, I do one by one. To me, it's much easier than doing a big groups in this one. So, okay, so that will be great. So when you said about the uh, take advantage of the mus music musicianship, as that you said, yeah. um, would you advise them to get involved with extracurricular activities yes. when it comes to music so, school? Yes. Yeah, so you can do many, try to get in as many ensembles as possible, get as much more experience as possible. Okay. Like just join in like pit orchestra. Like you could be part of the musical, but be in the orchestra section. You can be in jazz band. This will give you a broaden your jazz skills and you might get an idea on basic improv skills. Third one will be wind ensemble. That could be a great way. This is a little higher level. And if you want to go up and beyond, and this one's a tricky one, it's going into region slash all state band. Uh, would you suggest marching band? Yeah, uh, of course. To, to, to get in. Okay. So yeah, that, that, that's a good thing because um, I do know that a lot of high school students play in the band or they play in some ensembles. Um, would you also suggest for them to get involved with community band? Yeah, that would be a great practice here. That would be an excellent practice run. I remember participating during college years in Blonde Bird Band. Okay. So that's, it, taught, that's... it helped me strengthen up my sight reading skills all the time. That's good to know. That's good to know. So um, uh, what was my last question would be, so um, would you advise them to our high school students to also... Um, uh, you did advise them on, to, on getting participating in extracurricular activities. Yeah. What about um, their academics? Oh, um, actually, what I was going to ask you is that when you were looking for a position as a music instructor, um, did you do auditions? Like in order to get a, into a career, let's say I graduated from um, the Bachelor in Fine Arts, just like you did, and I want to apply for a job. So do you do, for it. you do get some examples like your playing samples. You're going to do that as a first example is your sh if you're able to perform. And step number two is how to teach. That's a teaching test. They will give you a demo test, like a demo lesson on that. They might give you like a random instrument or an instrument of your choice and teach them how to play it. So when you do a demo lesson, do they have a student there for you to do the demo no, lesson? I actually taught a a front desk person how to play how to put a saxophone together and taught them how to play hot cross buns. Oh, okay, that's fun. Um, uh, I know I'm kind of going backwards with this question. When you were applying at Montclair um, for your bachelor's degree, did you have to give them um, a, a demo or a uh, do you have to did you have to audition or did you yes. have to provide them with a video of your um it, at that time there was no video but i did have to be there in person for auditions for i had to be able to play all the skills all major skills some minor skills and chromatic second one is i had to play an a tune which means like some exercise you got to play well, there's okay. a fast, so one fast, one slow. The third one is a repertoire piece, meaning a big piece. Ah, okay. So I so, guess they, you, um, a, a student should really have a lot of this um, experience, so to speak, in order to hone their skills to be ready yes. to perform when they go apply for their um, undergraduate degree. Uh, yes. yes um, uh, thank you so much for this wealth of information. For um, because um, I had um the opportunity to do a presentation. Uh, there is one uh, more thing. There oh, is, what is it? 
there's a couple more when you're entering the college. It's not just the playing test. You have to have knowledge on your music theory test too. Ah. And you also want to make sure your R skill, meaning you got to make sure your ears good and be able to sight sing a little bit. Huh. Wow, that's a lot of preparation. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of prepping on this one. <laughs> well, I well at least you know um, it's it's this is really good information because like I was mentioning before, I had the opportunity to do a presentation for um, for a, a group of students who are in the performing arts. Um, who um, I'm sorry, it was a, a charter school for performing arts, and. Um, it's a good thing that uh, for them to watch this recording um, in order for them to get more information on how to get into a career just like yours or maybe uh, be a band director or um, um, you know uh, lead a band or uh, something of that sort but so um, Thank you so much, Karen, for um, for joining us in our career chat series. You're welcome. Um, it's